So what is foliation? Foliation is a preferential alignment of platy and elongated minerals in a metamorphic rock due to some kind of pressure or stress that is greater in one direction or the other. Now, as you know, metamorphic rocks can form in a variety of different environments, but we talked about two main environments. Those are contact metamorphic environments and regional metamorphic environments. Contact metamorphism occurs when rocks are heated due to the emplacement of some kind of magmatic body, where regional metamorphism occurs due to some kind of convergent stretches or a continental-continental collision that then causes pressure that is greater or maximum in one direction preferentially over the other. So be due to mountain building, you can get parallel alignment of some of these platy minerals due to some of these direct pressures. Now it's important to note that non-foliated and foliated rocks both form in environments that have the effect of pressure on it. Just happens to be that non-foliated rocks form in environments with relatively lower pressures, whereas foliated rocks form in environments that have relatively higher pressures. Another thing to note are the pressures that exist in each one of the environments. So as you can see on the illustration that I've drawn here, where all these lines essentially represent pressure that is equal in all directions. Whereas this illustration here shows pressure that is greater in one direction over the other. Non-foliated rocks do not have any kind of prefer preferential alignment of any minerals. So these rocks tend to have a texture that looks granular or massive without that characteristic parallel mineral grain alignment in the rocks. Whereas foliated rocks, because it has pressures that are greater in one direction over the other, you can get a preferential alignment of some of these platy minerals. So foliated rocks are a direct result of regional metamorphic environments, and non-foliated rocks are a direct result of contact metamorphic environments. Low pressure, high temperatures. High pressure, high temperatures. So let's take a look at an example of some non-foliated and foliated rocks. Now you have a couple examples of each within your rock and mineral boxes. Let's look at the first one, which is a piece of marble. So marble is considered to be a low grade, and sometimes the coarser grain marbles can be considered a high grade metamorphic rock. Now marble's protolith is a sedimentary rock which is limestone, and marble is form due to contact metamorphism. So as you can see in this example here, this piece of marble, if we look at it up close, it doesn't really look like it has any kind of preferential alignment of crystals. They essentially look very granular. And if you look up even closer, you can see that it has these nice giant CaCO3 crystals. Another example of a non-foliated metamorphic rock in your box is a quartzite. Now, a quartzite is considered a high-grade metamorphic rock, and it is formed from a sedimentary rock called quartz sandstone. So just like marble, here you don't see any kind of distinct patterning or layering or any kind of preferential alignment of minerals. It just looks massive and slightly granular. Some other types of non-foliated rocks are ones you have in your box, like you have a hornfels, and you also have a slate. Now, a slate is an interesting metamorphic rock because slate can form in both non-foliated and foliated environments. So now let's take a look at foliated rocks. And you have 
what I think to be a couple of good samples in your rock and mineral box. One of the first really good examples in your rock and mineral box is this sample of gneiss. So gneiss is a high grade metamorphic rock and its parent rock or protolith can be a mudstone, it could be a shale, or it can even be a granite. So in this nice here, you can see this alternating bands of color. And if you follow across the bands, you can see that it is these continuous lines or layerings. This alternating banding we call this foliation, because this banding is a direct result of alignment of these platier minerals. In this sample, these platier minerals tend to be biotites and muscovites. Another example of a foliated rock that you have in your box is a schist. Now, a schist is a, is a metamorphic rock that tends to form at medium to low grades. Now, this is schist, if you don't have a very large sample, these are actually pretty hard to find the foliation, but if you look very closely here, you can see some of these bendings and they look like they're layering. Now, this foliation, um, we call this schistosity. So this foliation is a direct result of many, and you can see actually flaking off in my hands here, is a direct result of the layering and alignment of these muscovite and biotite crystals. So these are really good examples of non-foliated and foliated rocks. So as you are identifying your sample, it is first really important to first discern whether or not your sample is non-foliated or foliated. And just from that information itself, you can begin to narrow it down.